Hey folks, this is Kalani. We have even more changes coming in patch 915. They keep announcing new features and changes and the dev team changing their mind and giving the players exactly what they've been asking for and it just keeps coming. I don't know where it's going to stop at this point but we have a lot to go through so let's jump right in. Let's kick things off with the big news, the AoE cap is being removed. I know a lot of players have asked for this ever since it was introduced, but they're actually gonna do it. Add this to the crazy list of 915 changes I never thought I'd see. There's a big blue post that starts with, The following area of effect abilities are no longer maximum target capped, and instead deal reduced damage beyond 5 targets. Are you ready for this? It's a long list, it's pretty much every ability that was previously AoE capped, but for the Death Knights that means Sacrificial Pact, Abomination Limb, Reanimated Shambler, Consumption, Bone Storm, Frost Scythe and Bursting Sores. For Demon Hunters, Blade Dance, Fel Barrage, Soul Cleave and Spirit Bomb. For Druids, Swipe and Brutal Slash. For Hunters, Soul Forge Embers, Beast Cleave, Multi Shot, Barrage, Explosive Shot, Carve and Butchery. For Mages, Arcane Echo, Frozen Orb and Glacial Fragments. For Monks, Rushing Jade Wind and Fists of Fury. For Paladins, Just Divine Storm. For the Rogues, Fan of Knives, Crimson Tempest, Black Powder, Shuriken Storm and secret technique, for shamans the storm elementals eye of the storm, for warlocks it's just the fell guards fell storm, and for warriors, oh warriors, whirlwind, blade storm, cleave, ravager and dreadnought. So yeah, no more target caps. You can pull everything you want to in an older raid and kill it all at the same time, instead of just killing 5 targets at a time. I'm really happy to see the AoE cap reverted, but I'm still pretty annoyed that the dev team thought it was a good idea in the first place. I'll be interested to see if there are many changes to mythic plus comps or strats going forward with no AoE comp, because if nothing really changes on that front, then we know the AoE cap didn't really do anything whatsoever. Personally, I'm glad to see it go and I wonder how many other big changes we could see that revert the more controversial or gameplay unfriendly design decisions over the past few expansions. I guess time will tell, they're definitely pulling out all the stops with this patch. There is another big change that will make a lot of raiders and mythic plus dungeoneers very happy indeed. All cooldowns of 2 minutes or longer now reset at the end of raid encounters or when starting a mythic plus dungeon. It was 3 minutes or longer cooldowns previously. This does not apply to shaman's reincarnation or to warlock's ritual of doom. It honestly never really made sense to me that certain cooldowns did not reset when you wipe on a raid boss or start a mythic plus dungeon, but this should hopefully cover everything important that needs to reset or should reset in those circumstances, so great news there. And then we also have quite a few class buffs to go through. Remember that this is the very first pass of the 915 balance and tuning changes, so we will see many more over the course of the PTR. If your class isn't here yet, don't worry, you might get something next week or the week after. You get the idea. But for right now, for Death Knights, Shackle the Unworthy damage reduced by 10% but now has a 100% chance to spread to nearby enemies when triggered. Withering Ground, Conduit Effect increased by 50%, Impenetrable Gloom, Conduit Damage Effect increased by 50%, and Debilitating Malady, Conduit Effect increased by 600%. For Demon Hunters, Sinful Brand cooldown has been reduced to 45 seconds, down from 1 minute. Blind Faith now grants versatility instead of mastery and 10 fury when a lesser soul fragment is consumed with Blind Faith active. And the Dancing with Fate conduit damage has been increased by 650%. For Druids, there will be 4 new travel forms to play around with. The Well Honed Instincts conduit is categorized for all specs instead of just Guardian. Adaptive Swarm Jump Range was increased to 50 50 yards up from 25 yards and it can jump to a friendly target even if it expired on a friendly target with no hostile targets available. For the Hunters, Aquilons, Corpse Flies and Gromits are now tameable as pets and Flayed Shot now deals an additional hit of damage when cast, that damage also has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of Kill Shot. 
For the mages, the gift of the Lich Conduit effect has been increased by 100%. For the monks, the way of the Fey Conduit effect has been increased by 100%. For the paladins, the Righteous Might Conduit damage effect was increased by 400%. And the healing effect was reduced by 50%. The Blessing of Season's Power has been buffed up too. Blessing of Spring increases healing done by 15% and healing received by 30%. And Blessing of Winter reduces attack and movement speed by 5% per stack, up from 3 percent per stack and its damage has been increased by 40 percent. For the priests, Festering Transfusion Conduit effects have been increased by 100%. Divine Star damage was increased for both Holy and Disc Specs by 40%. Contrition's healing was increased by 15%. Shadow Covenant's healing was increased by 10% and Mana Cost reduced by 10%. And the duration was lowered to 7 seconds. And Surrender to Madness's duration was increased to 30 seconds, up from 25 seconds. Then the Psychic Link talent now deals 60% of Mind Blast's damage, up from 50%. For the rogues, Septic Shock's Conduit Effect was increased by 50%. For the shamans, Elysian Dirge's Conduit Effect was increased by 50%. And for the warlocks, Impending Catastrophe's Chaotic Anima Cloud Width was increased by 60% and now deals a tick of its periodic damage on impact and will more accurately apply its dot to hostile targets. Decimating Bolt Cast Time reduced to 2 seconds, down from 2.5 seconds. Scurring Tithe Instant and Periodic Damage was increased by 20% and the cast time was reduced by 1.5 seconds. The Languishing Soul Detritus Legendary Power was buffed too, increasing the Crit Strike Chance bonus up to 45% from 40%. And last but not least, the Warriors. Harrowing Punishment Conduit effects were increased by 50%, the Merciless Bone Grinder Conduit effects were increased by 100%, the Hack and Slash Conduit effects were increased by 50%, and the Sinful Surge Legendary Power now extends the duration of Avatar by 2.5 seconds seconds for prop warriors instead of extending last stand's duration. So lots and lots of conduit and covenant power changes in here which ultimately means your class and spec might not change too much or at least feel too different in the grand scheme of things because these are all passive things for the most part but certain covenant and conduit combinations might become more powerful with these changes in place. Again I would fully expect to see a lot more balanced tuning as the PTR cycle unfolds. We typically see weekly changes with these PTRs or at least we have in the past so things might literally change every single week so check back to see if your class has got some more buffs or nerfs. One of the other new additions in patch 915 is the Legion time walking event. I know what you might be thinking, oh cool, another time walking event like we haven't seen seven of those already. And while I agree that time walking needs a revamp to make it more interesting and relevant, the dev team is actually doing something different with Legion time walking. They're going to let us do mythic plus time walking Legion dungeons. The way this is going to work is pretty similar to Mythic Plus, except we'll be doing a few of the Legion dungeons with a time-worn keystone which you can pick up in Oribos. If you're curious about which dungeons will be available, it looks like the list is currently Black Rook Hold, Eye of Azara, Dark Heart Thicket, Vault of the Wardens, Neltharion's Lair, and Court of Stars. That does leave quite a few dungeons left out. The Violet Hold, Cathedral of Eternal Night, The Halls of Valor, More of Souls, Return to Karazhan, Seat of Triumvirate, and the Arkway. Some of those dungeons were actually pretty cool, but maybe some of them will make it into the event at a later date, or maybe those dungeons were too hard to scale for Mythic Plus and Time Walking at the same time. Whatever the case may be, running a dungeon on Mythic Plus Time Walking will actually scale it up to max level, instead of scaling you down to the expansions level. Obviously, as you increase the keystone level, the dungeons will get harder and harder, as you would expect, and they will also have their own set of affixes, so they won't be exactly like the current week of Shadowlands Mythic Plus. They're also going to drop the same item level as Shadowlands Mythic Plus Dungeons and count towards your weekly vault progression. So that gear from all those years ago is coming right back to the forefront of gearing up. You can have Legion gear but Shadowlands item levels. That's going to make for some very interesting combinations of gear and give you way more options for gearing up than ever before. I don't think we've ever been able to get a past expansion's gear and have it on par with the current tier of gear. That really only ever extended to time walking, a specifically time walking raids that you go the highest that we've ever seen, but nothing that you go all the way up to the top tier of gear in the current season. 
And then as the seasons of Shadowlands go by and item levels for Mythic Plus dungeons are increased across the board, the same will probably happen to these Legion Timewalking Mythic Plus dungeons, making this event very special. It looks like we'll be able to upgrade the gear we get from these dungeons with the Valor currency as well. Items acquired from Legion Mythic Plus dungeons can be upgraded with Valor points, but will not appear in the Great Vault. So you can't get this gear as a weekly reward, but you'll still be able to upgrade it all the way to item level 246. There were some very powerful items back in Legion. I wonder which ones will make their way into the best in slot lists of all your classes. Now you can crank them up to item level 246. That's some crazy stuff. How do you feel about an older expansion's content being made so relevant that it's on par with the current expansion's content? Did they take time walking too far with these changes? Or do they maybe need to do this to every other time walking event so we always have a wider variety of dungeons to play through to gear up at endgame? Let me know what you think in the comments below. There are also some big changes coming to the alt experience in Shadowlands. We were promised more of a game plus style of gameplay for alts in Shadowlands, and we didn't really get that. This new round of changes should get us a bit closer though. First up, if you take your alts through the Threads of Fate option to skip the storylines, you'll be able to pick up a bunch of different quests for some extra experience gains. There will be a daily quest to play through Torghast, which will reward experience and Solash. There will be a daily quest to play in Battlegrounds that rewards experience and gear. Bonus objectives will also be much shorter and reward you with renown for completing them. And zone objectives will reward higher item level gear as well as anima. So you can start to work on some of those more important end game grinds with your alts and level up in a variety of ways and hopefully you'll be able to level up a bit faster. There will also be a new round of heirloom upgrades to make them relevant for the Shadowlands content and heirlooms will be usable outside of the Threads of Fate system. I'm not too sure how much of a boost heirlooms are going to be in general but I guess it's nice not having to worry about replacing gear as you level up. And then there will also be some new heirloom scouting maps to collect. We actually have two of these in the game already, one for the Eastern Kingdoms and one for Kalimdor. When you use these maps, you explore all of the areas in that continent or zone, and you also unlock all of the flight paths. That makes it much easier to get around on your alt characters, and new maps are going to be introduced for every expansion. So I guess you could unlock every flight path in the game on your alt without really having to do anything. And then we know on top of that there's a bunch of skips coming for alts, including being able to skip over any Covenant campaign that you've already completed, skipping over the Corthia storyline if you've already completed it, and perhaps the most requested skip, from me at least, the introduction questline that takes you through the moor. So playing alts is going to be much easier and it will be much faster to catch up to the current endgame. We also have some more information about how the new legendary recycling feature is going to work in patch 915. The rune carver will offer to destroy an existing legendary item and return all the soul ash or soul cinders that were spent to create the item. That's going to be very nice for anyone who crafted a legendary that they no longer use. Or maybe for players who swapped spec partway through an expansion. A guardian druid legendary isn't really going to serve you very well on a balanced druid now, so if you know you aren't going to use a legendary again, you can tear it to pieces, or to ash I guess, and get those currencies back. That doesn't make the system entirely free though. To craft a legendary item you need a crafted base item, two misses for the stats, and then soul ash or soul cinders. You only get the soul currencies back, which is great because they're the time gated currencies you can't quickly earn more of, but that does mean you'll be deleting that base item, you won't be able to get that back, as well as the missives. Not a huge loss if the legendary isn't a high tier, but it's definitely something you're going to want to think carefully about before recycling those legendaries. To go alongside this change, every rune carving power or effect that comes from dungeons will also have its drop rate increased by 100%, so you should never have to worry about killing a boss more than once to get the power you need, which will make acquiring legendary effects much faster for anyone who is returning to the game after a long break, anyone who maybe hasn't even played Shadowlands so far, and of course to help you collect legendaries on your alts as well. So legendary crafting should be a bit more friendly all around when patch 915 comes out. 
out. And on top of all of that, we can also expect some changes to the Group Finder feature. You'll now be able to search for a numeric range for Mythic Plus Dungeons. So if you only want to do keys plus 5 to plus 9, you'll be able to search for that specifically. I guess that means we'll have an option to select the key level when creating a Group Finder listing as well. That should make it much easier to quickly narrow down all the runs that you're actually interested in and cut out most of the spam along the way. When you create a Mythic Plus Keystone group, the group finder information will now also automatically populate based on the creator's keystone. So if you want to quickly put a group together for your key, which is a Mists 14 maybe, all you have to do is start a group and the game will auto fill all of that info for you. You can still manually change or input the info too though, so it's not super strict about the info, it's just there to speed up creating your groups. You will also now be able to set a minimum Mythic Plus rating or PvP rating requirement for your groups as well. So if you only want the 2k plus Mythic Plus rating crowd, you can do that. If you want to set up RBGs with only the higher rating players, you can do that too. And in addition to that, you can set a play style to set expectations for your group. So if you want to go hardcore, super smash some keys, there's probably an option for that. But if you just want a chill run, no stress, can't be dealing with those hardcore nutters tonight kind of deal, there's hopefully an option for that too. We'll have to wait and see whether you input the play style yourself or if it's from a list of a drop down menu, but hopefully you'll be able to search for that as well with all of these changes. That's it for the big, big news of 915 as of right now, but this patch also introduces the ability to freely swap covenants, the removal of conduit energy, legacy loot rules for BFA content, easier access to island expeditions and warfronts, new customization and options, faster travel in the moor, PvP gear changes, weather effects for main cities, and various other catch-up mechanics. This 0.5 patch definitely is not small, and I'm sure more and more will be added over over the coming weeks. Now remember that the 915 PTR is supposed to go up this week and seeing as we haven't seen it yet as of posting this video, I would fully expect it to come up later today. Today being Thursday if you're watching this right away, so the PTR should be up very soon so we can get some hands-on experience with these changes and see how it all plays. Then we can give feedback on everything and, you know, see how we go from there. But what do you think of these new 915 changes? Is there anything the dev team could do that would surprise you right now? What would be the big change needed to get you excited for the rest of the Shadowlands expansion? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.